Hey, you. <clears throat> yeah. You. Listening to me. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you want to hear it. But if you listen, then you'll hear it. Here it goes. You've been forewarned. Someone wants you dead. Good morning and welcome to my daily walk, the daily half hour podcast by an anonymous Hollywood guy who just walks and talks about anything and everything except those things he's contractually obligated to conceal. (sighs) Ah, all right. (laughs) <laughs> it is Wednesday, and if you are, have been following along, Wednesday, yeah, you, I don't think I've mentioned this to anyone, well, I don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast, uh, very few people know, but I have a meeting today related to project number one it's what I well I I'm not gonna put any expectations out there I'm not gonna say anything I'm not gonna I'm just gonna report back afterwards so it's today today's a what's been happening on this project is more people I meet, I keep, it just, I keep meeting people as a result of the project, and many of them are very impressive people. In fact, almost all of them, I'd say, I'm meeting some very impressive people. <laughs> they have resumes and credentials and just so many good things said about them, and they're accomplished, they're, it's, to me, <laughs> I'm like in their shadow. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. <laughs> Insert sound effect of dog. <laughs> no. Um, so, many of these impressive people that I've been meeting as a result of this project, well, after I meet them, they become my friends or they become collaborators or one of them became a business partner. <laughs> that's investor number one, and this could be investor number two, and that's all I'm going to say. Who knows? Oh, man, there's a helicopter. Ah, that is one of the loudest, obnoxious sounds. I don't even know how a helicopter shows up on this recording. I got to get to my topic. All right. I like how yesterday went. Tuesday. What was it? Uh, life lesson Tuesday. Tuesdays are for life lessons. So I talked about. I talked about getting engaged. Yes, I did. If you haven't listened to that one, then I'm not going to say any more. It was something real that happened in my life, and I like to think I learned from it. <laughs> Life Lesson Tuesday. (sighs) Vehicle backing up. Sound effects, sound effects, sound effects. Welcome to my daily walk. (laughs) My daily walk is full of sounds, noises, and (laughs) my brain, my wheels turning, right? My wheels turning. (laughs) Opening my mouth and sounds coming out. Okay. So, today's topic, how far in are we? That's something I should figure out, is kind of a regular time to start in on the topic. Just babble for five minutes or so, six minutes, seven minutes. (laughs) But, uh, if you've been following along, maybe you remember what today's topic is. Blood. Lust. Kind of a, kind of a heavy, yeah. It's a, 
No, not kind of a heavy, it's the heaviest of heavies. It's the core, the heart of the matter. Straight to it. Bloodlust. <clears throat> it's a real thing. And I think it can be cured. Ooh, drop that bomb. I believe it's a sickness. Yeah, definitely a sickness that results when you are overexposed to falsehood. The sickness that results in overexposure. Bloodlust is a sickness that results from the overexposure of falsehood. Period. That's my con one of my conclusions. This project I'm working on, it takes me all over the place mentally. Like, I think through so many different themes and subjects, and, and this is one. Uh, it's... It's, it's like the main one. It's like if... M mortality is a... Topic... It's everywhere in our lives at all times, yet we kind of just ignore it, or I don't know that we ignore it, we, until it until it impacts us directly, we just, we know it's out there, looming, mortality, <laughs> the end, well, there are some people who are dedicated to uh, shortening or to to <laughs> enacting that like their goal is to actually bring it about your end the end of you you should not exist you should not persist you should not have an opinion you should not have breath I do not even want to hear a thing you have to say I just want you dead that is a frame of mind. That is a frame of mind that exists in the world today. <sighs> and it's just based on lies. That's how you... The fact of the matter is, every psychologist, I guess, will attest to the fact that what you believe leads to your actions. What you have inside, what you believe in your core, will cause your feet to walk and your hands to move and your mouth to speak. And if you believe lies, then some of the things that your hands do, that your mouth says, that you run to, are violent, destructive actions. And it's everywhere. It's not the majority. I don't mean that the majority of... Well, I would say everyone believes a lie. Every single human believes something that is false. That's another topic for another day. Uh, being wrong. We are all wrong about any number of things. And some of us big portions of us are wrong about really important things. Some of us are just wrong about trivial and insignificant things. But just being wrong isn't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that believe very specific lies. Very pernicious, sinister, malevolent lies. And the rest of us wander around this amazing world and, and go, wow, I can't believe anybody would want to destroy or want to do anything but enjoy existing. Some people are so fixated on terminating others, extinguish, extinguishing other human lives, 
rather than enjoying the one they have. And I mean, they, you could argue they take a, a sick pleasure in crushing and destroying, beheading, eviscerating, burning alive as entertainment. Oof. Yeah, so this is a heavy, heavy, heavy. The heaviest of heavies, so I might as well go into some of the, <laughs> the other heavy notions related to this. I mean, I, this is something I wasn't really going to... I mean, I've been thinking about it for a while, and I was like, if I put that out there, if I start talking like that, how will that affect people? If I start... saying out loud on a recording that's posted where the entire world of human, you know, consciousness can access it. Ooh, be careful. Be careful. But I think this is the time for me to, you know, talk about this. I've been meditating on it. It... it Living in this town, okay, living in Hollywood, you will run into people that are famous. You'll just, you'll run into people who have celebrity status for one reason or another. You'll just see them sometimes if you hang out in certain places. Like they go to the grocery store. I've been in line behind somebody who I, I knew, I didn't recognize them, but I knew they were part of a certain industry and then I chatted with him and I found out, oh, okay, he's a member of a historic rock band. <laughs> oh, that's that guy. Seen him in many pictures and listened to his music before. So, but even if you don't go to those neighborhoods where they live or whatever, if you travel anywhere, driving down a freeway, uh, flying on an airplane. If you go anywhere, you are passing close by very influential people, very famous people, very powerful people, all the time. Especially, you know, New York and L.A., but if you travel at all, you are very close to very important people, or at least people that are valued by, you know, certain industries, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, public figures, let's say, famous people. Well, you know, that's, the, that's kind of the, it's the obvious thing, but it's also not pointed out that much. But that wasn't my first thought. Like, that's, that wasn't my first thought. But I'm going to expound upon that a little bit more. There's this idea outside of Hollywood that all these people that make these this music and these movies and these TV shows and the, the sports entertainment, the news, the politicians there are all these, it's this other world it's this great world, this glamorous world or this you know bigger than life world it just feels different than normal life <laughs> but the fact is, is it's not like all of these people are just normal people at a different place, different job, just normal people. Being around them may excite you, you know, oh, that's so and so, oh, they did such a good job in such and such, and, but here's the, here's where the whole thought started. Uh, not the bloodlust thought, but this particular disclosure not only when you're driving around, and I'm telling you, all of you, everyone listening to this and everyone not listening to this, you come into close contact with very, very influential, powerful people all the time. You're, you're not always given access to them, but they're around you everywhere. And the bad people are there too. Every one of you has driven past a body in the trunk of a car. Or 
a vehicle has passed you carrying bodies, bodies or a body, dead or alive, in your country, in your town, city, in your met met metropolitan areas. And I don't just mean once. You've driven by unbeknownst to people suffering beyond imagination. People that will never see their families again. People whose families will never see them again. And it's everywhere. The good and the evil are everywhere around you. And why aren't we a little more focused on that? Those are universally bad things people being taken against their will people being forced to do things against their will it's it's unquestionably evil immoral bad and there are a lot of evil people that do a lot of evil things and bloodlust is one of them people that take pleasure in destroying life and they may get a sick satiation in the moment of knowing they've snuffed out someone's earthly existence. But it's, it's not satisfying. They get that satiation and it drives them further. Blood lust. You taste blood. You just want more. But I think it's curable. Ooh, have I gone over? It's, I should check. Oh no. I'm still good. I'm still real good. Yeah, I, I get meditating on things and don't remember how long I've been talking, but Bloodlust. Bloodlust. It sounds like a heavy metal song. I'm sure there's probably been several songs, maybe movies. It's just, a, you know, it's that cool word, cool sounding word, but don't minimize it. It's, it's, a, it's the problem. Uh, one thing I, if I ever have any influence in this world, if I ever have an increased influence, if I ever am someone or considered important for anything that I've accomplished, one thing I want to emphasize above all else is our common good people who do evil things can have a change of heart people who are mistaken can be corrected and become repentant and sorry for believing falsehood that is a fact okay and this is the cure for bloodlust cure for all <laughs> deception for the the cure for the belief of deception is just this believe the truth oh <laughs> yeah it's that cut and dried so bloodlust is curable i'm not saying all who are consumed by it will be cured but that should be the goal start there and work your way backwards how yeah how Let's emphasize our commonality, the common good. What is good about being a human being? What is good about being a human being? One thing at the very top of the list is, is just that, forgiveness. Oh, you can do wrong and be forgiven. And forgiven, forgiveness is not something you earn. It's something somebody offers you. And you can't guarantee it's genuine there's no way you can guarantee that someone's forgiveness is genuine they can say the words but how do you know you just have to trust and believe and measure their actions against you or towards you measure their actions towards you test them to see if they really have forgiven you but you probably can't truly be forgiven until you have re have, have had the change of heart had the come to Jesus moment, had the, 
the dawning of light. Like your eyes are open. All these metaphors that communicate turning from darkness, right? Turning away from falsehood. All of those metaphors from believing things that are incorrect. Like simply believing things that are incorrect will destroy you and cause you to do things that are destructive. Self-destructive or others destructive. <sighs> I'll let you in on a secret. I'm not doing my da- my normal route today either. My daily walk. I, I did part of my normal route and now I'm venturing off because I'm going somewhere. I have to go to an office and obtain something. <laughs> I did mention earlier that this is a very important day. I'll, I'll, I'll finish on bloodlust, but let me let me get back to that. Today is uh, a day I've been been trying to have a meeting with this person for over a year. I had one on the calendar, but then I, a trip got scheduled where I. I I was out of the country, and but we did do a phone call um, from where I, my destination was, and that was over a year ago. And then this date on the calendar has moved a couple times, but here it is. Today's the day. Ah, oh, what will come of it? I just, I, (laughs) some silent spaces in my daily walk as I'm processing what I need to do after I'm done with this recording and make sure I have all the, (laughs) enough time allotted for prep and getting there and parking and, you know, getting lost and then finding the office and waiting and then just be myself, be honest. Uh, I don't know how much time he's going to allot me. It's a nice, you know, starting to write nice round number. So, like if it was on the half hour, I'd know, well, maybe he only has half an hour for me. But it's on the hour. Okay, maybe he has a full hour. Maybe it's the end of his day. Maybe it's middle, you know, I don't know. We'll see. <sighs> this walks up a hill. Um, and the long pauses are our kind of filler because bloodlust is a, is a big topic, but I don't know how far into it I want to go. Let's just let's extemporaneously talk about bloodlust. I personally can't imagine. Okay, I, is that even true? I just started a sentence that I don't know if what I was going to say is actually true. I was here's what I was going to say. I can't personally imagine just wanting to terminate another person's life, consciousness, existence, like done, you're over. So I say that, but do I believe that? Do I believe that I can't imagine that? Hmm. I think that might not be true. I think it's actually easy to imagine. I think we've all imagined it. I think we've all held hatred in our hearts. And that's hatred in your heart is the same as murder. Right? It's like, like that's, oh, that's the feeling that precedes that action. Mm. So, like, my, my dad, I remember him saying this one time, if I had ever met that guy and found out what he had done, I would kill him. Yeah, he said that. This was a long time ago. So, and it's a hypothetical. Of really, would he have really? Who knows in the moment? But and I reflected on a person in my life <laughs> at a you know kind of a formative point in my life, and there was a person in my life who, and I. thought it through I thought it through I'm like if that person were gone how much better would my life be and I, I I never even got that far really I didn't even think that far but I thought 
this person brings misery into my life, I would like to not feel this misery. And here's a few ways that might alleviate my misery, right? It's like I had conceived of a few scenarios that <laughs> might relieve me of that misery. And I'm being very careful with my words here. But I felt those feelings of wanting another person to be gone from my life. I felt them. I remember them. Person that, as far as I know, is still alive, but was removed from my life. And mm, ooh, there's some. I experienced is that bloodlust. Well, I would say it's not actually because. I had, well, here's the semantic dance. You know, I had reasons. I had reasons. The person was bringing me suffering and bringing others suffering. Other innocent people were suffering. And I was, felt powerless to relieve that suffering. Bloodlust, I think, is different. But I, I, at least it's similar in the sense of wanting to terminate someone's life. Bloodlust is like thinking a person is evil and shouldn't exist. This was person's doing bad how can it be fixed how can it be corrected justice so justice and bloodlust are not the same but the killing part taking another person you know terminating another person's existence to the end for you you end here uh, that's bloodlust is it's this maze of falsehoods of teachings probably in many cases from birth but, you know, there's, people can be transformed by information very quickly. And so there's the, from birth, <laughs> be, you know, believing a lie from birth, or uh, buying into a lie more recently. That, that's where bloodlust comes from. Overexposure to falsehood. That's my theory. That's my proposition. I don't know if it can be refuted but you can email me at my daily walk at uh, thiswaytv.com my daily walk at thiswaytv.com I don't, I don't know why I stumble over that email address my daily walk at thiswaytv.com I guess I just have to say it over and over again a couple times <laughs> I'm actually uh, timing is good I'm actually approaching the place that I was supposed to be. Hopefully the traffic noise isn't, isn't undermining the quality of this recording. I think my rambling ways are the only thing that could undermine the quality of this recording. <laughs> ah yes, self-deprecating humor. But I am grateful for anyone that listens. It really is just my journaling and those meditations on bloodlust I hadn't really done some prep work or thought about it I just had the word and take the thought you know I took the thought where it, you know it took me I just started speaking about it and uh, I'm glad I did I, th I think I self-edited safely enough and it brought up some memories some real memories so we analyzed it we compared it to emotions that I had experienced and have really still just barely scratched the surface <laughs> what bloodlust is why it is um, I, I think my what is that my proposal my proposition my tenant the, the notion that bloodlust is a result of overexposure to falsehood is that a tenant of faith is that a, a, a factual statement is that a truth is that an, uh, an inarguable truth is it? Mm, boy, topics, topics, topics just keep rolling off my tongue. Well, tomorrow will be an interesting continuation of The Hollywood Guy. It's the thematic Thursday, Hollywood Guy. And I think I'm going to talk about what a producer is. I know I hit, at, I hit on it yesterday, last Thursday by talking about uh, production assistants versus producers. I'm going to talk more about producers tomorrow what that means what it doesn't mean so there we go oh 
Almost missed it.